listen, we, we think our churches are built on numbers. They're not. They're built on people who are faithful. And you know what? Danny has never missed a beat. You know, he always comes and sets up for us, and Rick as well, and, and everybody that play our little part. Sometimes we think, well, you know, what difference do I make? Listen, if these guys don't turn up, it makes it difficult for us at the front. It makes it difficult for if if the people who are filming don't turn up, people who are doing the worship don't turn up, or they're late, or they don't. Listen, it makes it difficult. So, so I want to just say that that I never ever um, cease to be thankful for people that are that are consistent. You know, I did a teaching years ago about consistent Christianity. Boy, Christianity is the most inconsistent bunch of people that I've ever met. You know, the Bible says, like, your yes be yes and your no be no. One minute the yes and one minute the no. One minute the no, one minute the yes. That's the most unreliable bunch on this planet. Listen, if I was a CEO of a company, I'd sack a lot of them. Amen? I would, because they're not reliable. But with Victory Church, I know that whatever I've got to do, these guys are set up, things are, things are good. It, I, I, are you in appreciation of that? Yeah. I really appreciate it, that, that people do what they say they're going to do. And, and likewise, when, when people say they're going to come and speak, I really appreciate it, that I've not got to have, you know, an escape plan, you know, in case they don't turn up, because these people have got integrity. And so Danny's going to share his testimony, and we do, we do appreciate you, Danny. I know sometimes we come and we think, oh, well, listen, it doesn't work. The body doesn't work when one part of it's not working. So, so let's give Danny a big hand. Amen. <laughs> Okay. okay, well, I'm going to share my testimony today, and what I was initially going to do was just sort of stick to the script, but I feel like the Holy Spirit's kind of leading me in a different direction, so I'm going to use it as pointers. Um, unfortunately, you're going to have to take a walk on the dark side with me, because <laughs> my testimony started in the dark side, and I feel like there's some people that need to hear some of the stuff from that yeah, yeah. dark side, so... Bear with me, it will get brighter in the end. <laughs> um, yeah, so the way I come to the Lord, um, I was a bad boy, typical bad boy. Um, yeah, if there was a resume for bad boys, I'd be in the elite. Do you know what I mean? So, not a good testimony, but that's that's how it was. Um, it's a great I, I, <laughs> I um, I took drugs. I sold drugs. Oh, money was my God. Um, and I remember walking home one day and just now I know I was being convicted by the Holy Spirit. Um, at the time, I didn't know what was going on. Um, and I just started to, to think about my mortality, my life, what's next, what's the point in this, in, in me just existing. Um, so I got home and uh, grown man or yeah I just started to cry and I said if there's a God I need to know you because this doesn't make sense to me what's the point in, in life um, so uh, I slept sound that night um, I didn't usually sleep very well at the time so that in itself was you know quite a, a good thing I woke up in the morning and, I, and I, I just I'd had enough I was like I'm leaving this life behind um, I'd previously done some work for a friend in Eastbourne and um, she said to me anytime I needed to get away sort of I can just go down there and I thought well it's an es escape so um, I jumped in my work van I received a call from my friend and he was in a similar situation he said I'm coming with you kind of thing so we headed off to um, Eastbourne and left the drug game and the crime life or so we fought behind um, it was a strange time in Eastbourne because I started to experience some spiritual things that um, as someone that didn't believe in God and didn't really believe in, in the spiritual side of stuff um, it was really, really, really started to play havoc on me. Um, I felt a presence with me the whole time I was down there, but it wasn't a, a godly presence. It was a, a, a dark presence. And the entire time I was there, I felt like I was being influenced by this presence. Um, unbeknownst to me, my brother was a born again Christian. He lived up here. Um, he was praying for me. Right. And uh, so there was, a, uh, there was a battle going on <clears throat> that I was unaware of at the time. Um, 
but yet this thing, whatever it was at the time, had, had quite an influence um, to the point that I really understand um, divinity and tarot reading and all that sort of stuff because I could literally pull a thought out of somebody's head through the power of what this, whatever this thing was and I could literally read a person's mind and people were marvelled by it. It was like some sort of marvel to them. But to me, I knew this was wrong. Something was really wrong here. Uh, I shouldn't be able to do that. Um, so yeah, all that was happening and at the same time um, my, I was running from myself and my life caught up with me. I started doing the same thing there, um, selling drugs, same old stuff. And uh, I remember one evening I went to bed and I had a nightmare and this was kind of a t turning point for me. And in this nightmare I was just out in the streets and there was just riots everywhere and someone ran up to me, pointed in my face and said, your dad's dead. And um, I love my dad, obviously, most people do. Um, I woke up just in tears. It was really, really powerful. Um, in hindsight, I can tell you now what was happening. The, the devil was trying to get me back to London through fear of my dad dying, when God was clearly pulling me in another direction. So I rang my dad in the morning. I said, like, are you okay? He assured me everything's fine, stop being stupid. Um, so I thought, well, I'm going to have to ring my, my brother that I thought was in a cult <laughs> and, and, and see what's going on. So I, I rang him and he said to me, look, I've been praying for you. You know, the Lord's got a calling on your life. You need to come and see me, which to me at the time still sounded like nonsense. I was like, OK, um, I gave it a couple more days. I was still resisting. And uh, eventually I found myself on a train and I went to see my brother. Um, So I got to his house and uh, he gave me the gospel. He told me what Jesus had done for me, how he'd paid for my sins, um, and that he's got a, a brand new life ready to start for me. It was a bit more in depth than that. Um, he walked me through the book of Romans. Um, and I knew, yes, this was good. I knew it in my heart, but there was still a part of me that was resisting this. So I fought with my brother that evening. Um, He's trying to convince me of what he knows to be the truth. And I'm trying to unconvince him of what he knows to be the truth. <laughs> and um, he left the house and he said, just, just stay here. And he left and went and stayed at his friend's house, leaving me in his home. So um, I was left to deliberate <laughs> with myself and what I know to be the Holy Spirit now for the entire night about um, my past life and, and what God has got for me. So I did, I deliberated and the Holy Spirit won. In the morning, I knew there was something in this and I, I, I kind of owed it to myself to have a look. My brother came back and he looked at me and he was like, wow, you look clean. And I didn't know what that meant at the time. And I was like, okay. He says to me, come to church. So I came to church. Uh, I went to New Life in Lincoln, big old church, big church building. And um, there was a guy from Canada there giving the gospel again. And uh, I sat at the back, at the top, as far away as I possibly could. <laughs> and uh, he'd done a salvation call at the end. And a couple of guys at the front put their hands up. And the whole church erupted. And I was just like, no way. Not me. And um, it's like he, I was waiting for him to just get on with it and carry on. But it's like he was waiting for me. Everything was just silent. And nobody said anything for about nearly a minute and I was just like this is weird I need to put my hand up I just knew I did so I put my hand up the church erupted in praise so um, I went down I prayed with him afterwards and um, I believe that it, it, it took I, I received um, Jesus and um, afterwards I said to my brother you know what's now what, what's next and he said to me just get in the word um, the New Testament didn't take his advice went through the whole thing but anyway he said the New uh. Testament so I did, and um, I was amazed because it read like a book before to me, and now it's just come alive. Mm. It was like something out of Harry Potter, do you know what I mean? It was just weird. I was like, what the? And literally, I, I didn't move out of my room for, I can't remember, maybe four or five weeks. I just devoured the word. Um, I was put onto a teacher called Andrew Womack. His teachings just blew me away. I felt like I was floating half the time. I was just devouring teaching after teaching. I was in my word constantly. You know, my mum would bring food up for me to eat and 
it'd go cold because I'd forget it was there. I was so raptured by this God that had just come alive to me. And um, after a period of time, I said to the Lord, you know what, I've done nothing but seek you. Don't I deserve something more than this? I said deserve, I know, joke, right? And we don't deserve anything, but God's merciful and he's graceful. And um, he did, he revealed his love to me that night. Um, I'll skip to the end of the dream. I had a dream, um, but it was a godless world. I was walking through a godless world. I knew in my heart, this is a godless world. And at the end of this dream, um, I was standing on the grass where we used to play football as kids. And I just remember putting my hands up and saying, please, Father, take me back. And this white flash of light came thundering at me from the distance. I could just see it moving towards me and it hit me and boom, love, pure love just exploded throughout my whole body. And it was it's like a, a bomb of love. I can't explain it to you. And it was just so pure and so amazing. I woke up blubbering like a baby and it stayed with me nearly a day and a half I was in bits I couldn't even talk to people on the phone I tried to ring my brother to explain to him he said oh I can't understand you I'll come around and see you do you know what I mean I was just in bits and um yeah that's my testimony and um, I've got myriads of testimonies that I've followed up after that um for anyone that's considering coming to Jesus it's a no-brainer um his love's free he doesn't judge you his love's perfect. Um, he, his, he isn't this old, white-haired guy sitting in a throne with a lightning bolt waiting to get you. That's not who he is. Yeah. Nothing like that. Um, he's love, and he loves you. He loves all of us. Thank you. Thank you.